to say that I want it to do the t-test. Don't forget there's two variants of an independent samples t-test. The first variant is where we assume that the data has been drawn from populations that have the same variance, okay? And then the alternative is where we assume that the data has been drawn from populations that have unequal variance. Now, by default, the t-test if I just run this t-test here, by default, it assumes that the variances are unequal. And what that does is it gives us Welch's variance of, a variant of the t-test. But let's just run it where we assume that the variances are equal. Okay? So I'm just going to say var, var dot equal, and I'm going to say, actually assume the vars to be equal. Assume that to be true. Okay, So that's what we get here. And that's actually all we have to do. We specify our... In our, our dependent variable followed by our independent variable with a twiddle between them, okay, that's combining them together. We specify where we took the data from or where the data is coming from and where these columns are specified. They're specified in this data frame, okay, that we just created. And I would like to run the t-test assuming that the variances are equal, okay. So I'm going to hit return on that and we get the results of our two sample t-test, okay. Uh, you can see it says the data is exam grade by gender. Brilliant. The T statistic is 5.855. The degrees of freedom is 398. Don't forget the degrees of freedom when you're doing an independent samples T test, yeah, is the size of the first sample plus the size of the second sample minus 2. Well, that's 400 minus 2 is 398. The P value in this case is 9.9 .9 by 10 to the minus 9, so it's tiny. Let's keep in mind that the null hypothesis for the t-test, for an independent samples t-test, or a two-sample t-test, is that the means are equal. The alternative is that they're not equal, okay? Uh, so once again, the rule is, if the p is low, the null must go. And we've set this particular, let's say we've set the significance level at 5% or 0.05. Now clearly the p-value is tiny, it is less than 0.05, and as such we reject the null in favour of the alternative. So the alternative hypothesis is that the true difference in the means is not equal to zero. In other words, well, if the means were equal to zero, that means that there's no difference. If the means are not equal to zero, in which case, which is where we are because we've rejected the null, it means that there's a difference in the mean values. There's a difference in the exam grades. There's a difference in the average exam grades for the males compared to the females. And also what we're producing here is confidence intervals. But sure, we've, we've talked about that in a previous video. Okay? What would the t-test look like if I assumed that the variances were not equal? Okay? Well, just to rerun it, this time we could say false here. Okay? So we could say false. Okay. And when I rerun that, I get, well, we get Welch's two sample t test. That's the version of the independent samples t test when the variances are assumed to be false. Okay. Actually, by default, we don't have to provide this particular value. If we don't say what the variances are, it's automatically assumed to be false. But also in this case, we're rejecting the null hypothesis here. Uh, the p value is 1.02 by 10 to the minus 8, which is very small, which is less than 0 0.05. Okay. So that was two ways that we could run the t-test, but we were using our data frame as, 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 as the data input and we were specifying the independent so we're specifying the dependent and the independent variable, which could be found, found in this data frame. An alternative way is actually just to pass in the two vectors. So let's do it. So I'm going to say t.test. Let me start again. Let me just clear this here. Control L. I'm going to say t.test. Whoops. Let's do a small case. I like small case better. t.test. Uh, what we're going to pass in is... Hmm, we're going to pass in the, the... Let's say the exam grades for the males. So I'm going to say data dot. Okay, actually, let me just list out our list. Let's just say, let's list the variables that we've created already up to this stage. Yeah, okay. So there's the data dot females and there's the data dot males. They're the two things. They're the two vectors containing the male and the female uh, exam grades. So now I'm going to say t dot test. Okay. What I'm going to pass in is the data dot males. Okay, the male data followed by a comma followed by the data dot females. Okay, so you see right, we're specifying the two vectors here where in the earlier version that we ran, we just gave the names of the independent and the dependent variable, which was extracted from the data frame. In this case, we're passing in the two vectors. And what I'm going to assume here is that var dot equals equals true. Okay, so that we're assuming that the variances is true. And when we hit return here, well, there you go. We got the same result that we got earlier on when we used the data frame approach. Okay. Uh, when I rerun this here using uh, var dot equals equals false, actually, let's get rid of this. 
Okay, let's not specify it. I said earlier that if we don't specify it, it assumes that the variances are not equal. In other, in other words, the, the parameter var dot equal is set to false. Let's see what we get here. We should get Welch's result, okay? And that's what exactly what we get, which is the same p-value as what we had earlier on, okay? So actually, in both cases, we've actually run four independent samples tests here. One where we assume uh, that we're using a data frame. Uh, we've done both variants where the, the variance is assumed to be equal and the variances are assumed to be not equal. And then we've ran just here where we've used the actual vectors. Uh, the vectors for the vector representing the male exam grades and the vector representing the female exam grades. And we ran both variants as well. One where we assume the variance to be equal and one where we assume the variance not to be equal. Okay. So we've done a lot here, uh, but once again, uh, I hope this was in some way informative. And my name is Jonathan Lambert with the Mathematics Development and Support Service at the National College of Ireland. And as I said, I hope that this was informative, but more importantly, I hope that was actually helpful for you. And thanks for watching. Okay, bye bye.